In this video, you'll learn how to recreate the Stargate sequence from 2001 A Space Odyssey all inside After Effects. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. 2001 was released in 1968, well before they had After Effects, so they had to use a primitive mid-1900s equivalent. Douglas Trumbull developed a technique where coloured gels were photographed at an extended exposure rate through a slit or mask in front of a camera lens. Now it was a lot more complicated that, but it really was ingenious, and their results on analogue technology can't really be matched. Filmmaker IQ has an incredible video breaking down the full process. But we're spoiled and have access to After Effects, so let's see how close we can get in the next few minutes. You can download this project file for free down in the description. So we're gonna start off recreating their gels in a new comp, which we are going to make massive. So let's keep it 1080 high, but make it 15,000 pixels wide and give it a nice black background. So this comp is gonna be very long and we're essentially just gonna start filling it up from the right onwards with some really colorful, interesting shapes and patterns. So let's just grab our pen tool, pick a nice color, and I'm just gonna draw a straight line around the right area. Let's increase that stroke and add a dash just to break it up a bit. And let's just call this line one because we always label our layers. And then let's duplicate this, move it down to the bottom, maybe adjust the thickness a little bit. And let's move on to make something else. Let's grab our pen tool again. This time we're just going to draw a big wavy line that's going to go through a lot of this comp and make that a different color. There we are, and maybe make that stroke a little bit smaller. Let's also create a shape with the pen tool. Let's click and draw a triangle. Let's make this one orange. And on this shape we are going to add a repeater. Let's increase the amount of copies and maybe transform its rotation as well to create something interesting and maybe its position too there. So those are a few options you can use to fill up this comp. Now these will all look a lot cooler later once we put all the effects and perspective on it, but what I've found to work the best that replicates the original sequence really well is by using fractal noise. So let's create a new solid with control plus Y. Let's call it pattern one. It doesn't matter what color it is because we are going to add the effect fractal noise and this sort of generates a random noise pattern. We can zoom in a little bit. We don't need to see the whole comp. It's more important that we get to see the details here. And let's increase the contrast way up from 100 to 3,500. So we're getting only black and only white. And let's turn the brightness down to maybe minus 900 because we want it to be mainly black. We just want a little bit of white showing through. Then we open up transform. And we also wanna change the noise type from soft linear to block. So we get more square shapes in here. Then we can open up the transform properties and we do want to uncheck uniform scaling. So now we get both the scale width and the height. So let's increase the scale width to maybe 500. So now it's a lot wider. We have a lot more rectangles and thin lines. And let's scale the height down to around 80. And these are numbers that I found that work well, but you can tweak all of these to get slightly different results and even more wilder results if you want as well. And let's turn the complexity down a little bit from six to four because we don't need that much detail. And now in the sub settings, we're also gonna change the subscaling down from 56 down a little bit to 42. And this just means there'll be fewer areas where there are big blocks of white, which might blow out our image when we have a lot of glues on it later. And that is it for this fractal noise effect. We'll get something looking a bit like this. So let's toggle that down and then add the effect tint. We can map the white to whatever bright color we want. Let's go for a blue. And to make this pattern appear kind of randomly throughout our sequence, we are going to select our pen tool up here and just draw some masks all around our comp. So we'll do some up the right end and one over here and then one at the back too. So that's starting to fill it up nicely. Then we can duplicate that layer. We can change its color. Let's go to yellow and let's move our masks around so it covers a different area. And we can also make some changes here. Maybe we go for a different noise type. Maybe we go back to linear and change the brightness a bit and maybe increase the scaling as well. So it's a bit longer and skinnier. And these will all make subtle differences that you will see very soon. And now we're just gonna fill up this comp using more of these techniques. And you can set the blending mode to these patterns to screen as well. So then the black areas become transparent. There, this will do for now. We've got a lot of colors and a lot of random things filling up this comp. Now the motion for this is all gonna be done in a separate comp. But first, a quick word about this video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN protects your data and identity from heartless tech giants, devious cyber criminals, and rogue artificial intelligence. 
It can swap the virtual location of your device, changing your IP address to unlock juicy, juicy content that might be blocked or censored in your area. In Australia, in the US, and pretty much every other country on the planet, you cannot stream 2001 A Space Odyssey on Netflix. But there is one country if you can. And with Surfshark, you can change your location to Japan, where you can watch 142 minutes of one of the best science fiction pictures ever produced. Surfshark also secures your personal information. So if you're on a public Wi-Fi uploading your latest renders at midnight, hackers won't have a chance at getting at your data in what would otherwise be an absolute feeding frenzy. Enter the promo code BENMARRIOTT for 83% off, plus an extra four months free. And Surfshark offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there is absolutely zero risk to trying it. You could watch 2001 304 times in 30 days, and when you're done, you might have half a chance of explaining to me what the ending is about. Check out the link to Surfshark VPN down in the description. So let's create a new comp, uh, but let's make this regular sized 1920 by 1080. And in this new regular sized comp, let's drag in our gels comp and we are going to animate its position. So we're going to put the far right edge starting off the screen, press P on our keyboard, keyframe its position. And then at the end of the comp, which in this case is 15 seconds, we're going to click and drag it to the very end. And that's all the motion we need to do. Let's watch and see what that looks like. Okay, that's looking pretty good and we can start to get a kind of idea of how this is gonna work and what it's going to look like. Okay, now we can create our main comp where the final effect will live. So in a new composition, we can keep these same settings and we're gonna drag in our Stargate motion comp that we just made. Let's scrub through a bit so we can see a frame with some action happening. And I'm also going to pull up my title action save guide because that gives us a nice little crosshair in the exact center of our comp. And with that selected, I'm gonna click and drag it holding shift until the left edge lines up with the exact center. There. Now we are going to add the effect CC power pin. This is an awesome effect. It gives you these circles, these handles on the corners of your composition, and you can drag these up to change the perspective of this comp. This effect is really useful for placing screens inside empty monitors in footage. And we can drag in the edge to the very edge of our comp here. Let's move these inside corners a bit towards the middle, maybe a touch more, and let's drag these outside edges up even more. So we get something like this. And now this is what it looks like. Okay, we're starting to get very close here. So now all we need to do is flip it and put it on the left side. So let's duplicate this layer with Command or Control D, go up to Layer, Transform, Flip Horizontal, and then drag that one to the left and make sure that one lines up in the middle as well. Excellent, so it's now coming from both sides. Now we don't want these to exactly mirror one another. So all I'm gonna do is drag the bottom one and move it forward maybe one second. So now they're playing at slightly different speeds and we can always tweak this later, but they should be different enough once we add the effects. I'm also gonna create a new solid with Control Y and make that black as our background, just to avoid any funky things happening once we start adding our effects, which we're going to do now on a new adjustment layer. We can also turn up our Tidal Action Safe Grid as well. And as we start adding effects, After Effects is going to progressively slow down even further. So be prepared that After Effects will chug after a little while because yeah, we're going to add some pretty gnarly effects. So the first one we're going to add is Optics Compensation. Now what this effect does, if we change the field of view, is it warps the outside of our comp, kind of like a fisheye lens. So this is useful for getting rid of those fisheye effects. So we're going to reverse the lens distortion so it warps it more towards the edge and give it a field of view of 120. So now it's much more warped towards the edge. So we can see it pulling and warping a bit more. Now, if we turn that off and on, we can see it's making some of the edges of our comp not visible. So what that means is we can select these comps, select the power pin and move it further into the center, exaggerating the effect a little bit more. So let's just drag these in until about here. So it's about halfway and do that with both sides, just making sure everything still remains visible there. So now we've got more of a warping effect on the edge. And then back on our main effects adjustment layer, we're going to add another effect, which is warp. Change it from arc to fisheye and the bend to minus 100. And this just squeezes the center even more. So now we're getting really a lot of warping and it's looking pretty nice. Ram preview is slowing down a bit though. And if you're thinking this is too fast or too slow, we can always go into that Stargate motion comp. And if we want it faster, we can move this keyframe closer to the start. So now it moves from left to right faster and then in our main comp, pushes outwards a bit faster. It was probably around a good speed before, so I'm gonna put that roughly back, maybe make it a bit faster, and then let's add some more effects in our main comp. 
I'm going to toggle down our existing effects because we need to make room for all of the new effects we're going to add. And now I'm going to add a hue and saturation. Now this is completely optional, but I find no matter what colors I choose, I'm trying to make them look cool and sci-fi and psychedelic. If I mess with the hue a little bit more, they become a bit more interesting, but this is completely optional. You could ignore this as well. And maybe I'll adjust this a bit more. About 200 feels nice. I like these colors. Then we are going to add some noise to mimic a film grain effect. And we can make this pretty subtle. Let's just make it 5% but still slightly noticeable. And then we are going to add a blur, which we'll use Gaussian blur and set it to three pixels just to soften everything up. Now that blur and noise may seem like they're not really doing much here. And maybe like we've just removed the noise and they don't do much now, but the next effects will amplify them. And that is our glows. So let's add one glow effect. And as always, we are going to add multiple layers of glows to get a more refined look that's closer to what we want. So in the first glow, we're gonna set the radius to 30. I turn the glow intensity down to 0 0.5 because we're going to be adding a lot more of these. Don't want them too intense. Let's duplicate this effect with again, command control D and on glow two, we're going to increase the radius to 100 and we'll keep increasing the radii, keep the intensity at 0 0.5, duplicate it again, glow three, put the radius up to 200. Let's increase the intensity to 0 0.7 and we'll duplicate it once more. And on glow four, when we're going to make the radius 400 and put the intensity up to one. There, so we've got a really nice heavy glow on these effects. So here is what it looks like now with all the glows, which is looking pretty nice if I don't say so myself. And we can pause it here and take a look at some of the areas of the glow here. We can take a closer look at what that blur and noise were doing that we added earlier. So let's close down all our glows and just turn that noise and Gaussian blur off. So now we can see the difference. When we add the noise, it adds a bit more of a grain and that Gaussian blur, it just gives that glow a bit more texture and a bit more of an organic filming look with that noise. And we get some nice blooming highlights as well. Then we are going to add another noise effect. Again, put it to 5%. And by adding noise, we're also sort of lightening up all the dark areas. So they go from being black to being a bit of a noisy dark gray. So if you wanna get rid of that, we can add a curves effect and just take this black point in the bottom left corner and drag it to the right very slightly. And that will turn all our blacks down to pure black and we only get that noise in our glow, which is an effect that I like, but you can tweak that to your own tastes. Now here's what our sequence is looking like. I'm kind of feeling I want a bit more glow on this. The original had a lot of blooming highlights, so we can just duplicate that last glow effect, increase the radius a bit more, and maybe leave the intensity how it is. And of course, this is really all editable, so we can go into our Stargate gels comp and we can add anything here. I'm gonna drag in my logo, set that to screen and scale it down. And in our main comp, I bet we can hardly tell what that is. With all that warping, it's hardly recognizable at all. And once you're happy with this, you can render it out and there's still one more fun thing we can do. So I've got a render that I've pre-rendered out earlier that I'm gonna drag in and drag that over the new comp icon. And because it's rendered, our playback is pretty seamless. And now what we can do is duplicate it with Control or Command D, set its blending mode to screen, and then we can just offset it in time and drag it a bit earlier. And now we get double the chaos happening because we've got two layers. And we can also add a hue and saturation effect to this top layer and adjust the colors as well. So now I've got way more colors and it's more interesting and you can do this as much as you want. We can duplicate this again. So now I've got more glow in these red areas here. We can try different blending modes. We can set it to difference and offset it a bit and that can give you a bit more of a slightly different interesting result and play with any of these blending modes really. And you can rotate them as well. We'll make it 180 degrees and offset the time even more. And you can just keep layering these up until they're as dense as you want them to be. So there you have it. Remember, you can download this project file for free down in the description, play around with it. There's so many different ways you can make adjustments to that gels comp by adding different things, different effects, but this should hopefully get you started. And thanks again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. To find out more, click the link down in the description. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.